What up guys, this is The Shield Skater and welcome back to The Shit Podcast. Today we have a very special episode because this is the 20th edition of The Shit Podcast and we have a very special guest for this video. She is from Canada and she is the second female skateboarder that we have in The Shit Podcast. So let's go for something to drink, of course, and let's sit back and relax. Welcome to The Shit Podcast, guys. Hi everyone, my name is Annie Guglia, I'm a skateboarder from Montreal, Canada, and welcome to the SHIT Podcast. Let's go for it. What's up guys? Welcome to the Shit Podcast. Today we have the opportunity to be with Annie Guglia, a very nice skateboarder from Montreal, Canada. So what's up Annie? How is it going for you? Good, good. How are you? Very nice. I'm feeling very nice right now. So are you going to skate today? Yes, I'm actually going skating at two because um, in Montreal right now it's cold. So we can't really skate outside anymore. So we have to like With COVID, we had to like take appointments for the skate park. So I'm my oh. session is from two to three. <laughs> okay, so the winter is hard right now to to skate yeah. outdoor. All right, and you have to skate in this way every day, like making an appointment to the skate park. Yeah, it depends which days, but like for because um, we have two indoor skate parks in Montreal. So the first one, it works only like by the hour, but it's not open to the public. Whereas the other one is open to the public, but we have there, they have a capacity of like 50 people and we okay. have to skate with with masks. So it's kind of like that's why you have to take appointments and stuff. So. Yeah, I know. I know. I know how it is. And um, I'm talking about that, talking about this year. Uh, how has this year been for you? and your skate career you know this year has been very weird in a lot of senses <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean um so i'm trying to do the uh, that the olympic path right oh. so we were supposed to have like all the olympic qualifiers um from february to may of this year and because of coronavirus everything was cancelled so so that's like one part that completely shifted to next year which is fine like at first it was stressful because we didn't even know like if it would be postponed or just cancelled so now it's just postponed to next year so what i did instead of like doing all these travels and competitions i just skated at, in montreal filmed a little street part and like skated for fun with my friends basically <laughs> okay and talking about the olympics uh do you have chances to be in the Olymp in the olympics next next year And um, that's that's the thing. Like we were, we did almost half of the qualifiers so okay. far, and we still had, I think, five competitions to go. So um, now that the Olympics were not like it's next year, so they're gonna have the qualifiers. We don't have dates yet, but probably somewhere between um, March and May again, something like that. We don't we like we don't even have information about it, okay. but we're gonna know 60 days in advance. So to give us time to prepare. Okay, but the progress that you have had until now, it's okay. Or do you have to restart the, the qualifiers no, no, no. in the scores? No, it's it's going to be at, like the points of these ones are going to be added to the 2018 and 2019 season. Okay. Um, can you explain a little bit uh, on how that works, the, the qualifications to be in the Olympics? Um, yes, yeah. I, I don't know how it works. So yeah, it's basically it, for, since two years, it's been street league with like the the path for the um, Olympic qualifiers. What they did is they so they have street league, and then before street league, they have open qualifiers. So every country can like send I think three uh, men, women for street, and then for park, it's another thing. But okay. like for street, it's every country can bring three people, and then. Uh, depending on uh, how close you are in the rankings, like some countries have more, can bring more people because they're like securing quotas or something. 
So basically how it works is just like every country goes to street league to qualify and then the people who qualify are going to um, are doing street league. And okay. that's how it's been going. It's not just street league like there's another there's other competitions but um I think people know street league more so um yes a lot. So yeah. <laughs> so it's cool cuz cuz like and usually it works with like national championships so every country has their own national championship and then that's how they pick the skaters who go there. That's how we did it for Canada and it's funny cuz I was like I was not trying to obviously like if you skate you know like Olympics were never a thing for skateboarders. Yes. <laughs> and it, for sure. it just happened. Yeah, it just happened and then I was like, "Oh, I'll try." I went to the first national championship we had in Canada and then I won. So I was like, "Oh." And then I because I won, I was invited to street league, so I was like, "Oh, I'll try." Like and it, that's how every all of this happened. Like it was just kind of random and funny. <laughs> yeah, that's nice and kind of random as you were saying. Um how do you think how do you consider is your performance for competition? Do you do you feel good for competitions in general? Yeah, I I like I like competitions in general because it's for me I feel like most of the time I don't push myself enough. Like I'll just like skate for fun and I'll learn new tricks but like in competitions there's like this extra adrenaline yes. that makes you want to jump down things. Yes. <laughs> so, competitions so are tactics. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I like that because it's like, and also skating with all my friends from all different countries who like everyone has the same goal of like performing well and performing well is like basically skating well, you know. Yeah, so it's for like, sure. So it so it's really um like it. I like competition because it pushes me to like do more with my skating. Yes, I know what you mean, and to be more disciplined with the practice sessions and to work yeah. on the consistency. What do you yeah, think exactly. is the most important skill to be in competitions? Mm. Um I think especially for street league because there's like two different things but consistency definitely and then um I think being like just overall in good shape because it's so much harder than we think to skate street league honestly like especially the well like runs everybody knows how how runs work and it's like a one minute run after you're like <gasps> yes that's true <laughs> <laughs> but then but then the other thing like best tricks are harder than people think because like yes you have five tries to do like your best and but even like just sitting down like try next time you go to the skate park try sitting down for like two minutes because that's the time it takes for everybody else to go like sit down for two minutes and then stand up and try your hardest trick Like it's it's kind of hard to just go yes. at it like without like first try um when you you're like waiting for a couple minutes before like you have like yeah it's 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 harder than people think and that's why I think I'm appreciating it more because it's a, it's like a, I see I see it as a challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes that's true. So do you prefer uh, the run to to have a run or to the best trick? What 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 do you prefer uh to skate? I I want to say I'm I want to say the best tricks because um because I like to have like this pressure of learning right now like right now you know what I mean <laughs> whereas yes. a run is like it's good because it's consistency and it's usually tricks that you can do every try and like it's the standard is lower it's just basically more being more consistent but like best tricks I like it because it's like let's say like I want to kick flip that stair set or whatever like I only have one try so I have to like there's no trying and there that's something yes. that I really like about the best trick section it's like and and it builds up too because if people are doing bigger tricks then you're like oh then I have to like it's strategic too so yes. I like it <laughs> and we don't have this problem of, of feeling after the after the run the run the run exactly. is difficult we have we yeah. need a, a a nice physical condition for it Um, yeah, and the second run is kind of hard too. Well, it's harder because the first run, like you're not exhausted before, but then you do your first run, and then like five, six minutes after you're doing your second run, so you're already still a little bit tired, and then you're going for your second run. So it's something to think about. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. And what is the the most fun contest in which you has been? 
um, that you remember that you say, oh, okay, really? this was such a nice experience skating there. Mm. Yeah, um, the I want to say the um, uh, the world championship in um, well for like the Olympic qualifiers, the world championship in São Paulo was so fun because it was like I came back from my ankle injury. And then it was like the first contest where I could do my like bigger tricks. And um, I remember like I, I did my two runs and then landed um, three of my five best tricks. So it was like good point wise. It wasn't like my best performance ever because of my ankle. But like I just felt proud because it was the first time in like a couple months that I could skate well. So and that whole contest was so fun. I think it's when uh, Haisa won. The little girl from yes, Brazil. Yes. I think that's when. I think that's when she won. It's that same contest. Oh, now, sure, now it girl. was. It was a really good contest. Okay, that that was that was nice. And what what is your favorite trick to try in the best trick section? What is your signature move that you say, okay, I need to do this in this in every contest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a couple. My like go to tricks. Um, For for contest or like nollie lip slide, I do that. Front side, and front side or back side? Uh, yes. front side, no, nollie front side. All right. I I can do both, but on like bigger obstacles, I I I, I go for nollie front side because it's easier for me. <laughs> yes. And then um, board side two shove, like the yes. it's like board side dig spin or two shove. I don't yes, know how to say it. Two seventy out. But the, two seventy shove. Yeah. Okay. This one is a is a good one too. Um, but like I can't, I I don't master it enough on down rails yet. Like it, it has to be like a like a out flat. rail or yeah okay. out rail or something or top rail. So and then um, feeble 180. That's what I do all the time. And then if I have more, like right now I'm working on kick from boards and like a couple other tricks that um, I'm trying to up my game. Obviously, like but these are my go-to tricks. <laughs> okay. And if the spot, if the spot is are a set of stairs, what would be your trick to try to, to try in there? Um, yeah. My uh, depends how big it is, but my um, well, if it's super big, just a kick tip is like I know I can do it first try, and then um, nollie backside big spin too. That's like oh. two tricks that I can do pretty easily, and then fakey full cab and backside flip. I would I would go like these four are like depending on the size too because I can't backside flip like super big stuff, but I'll nolly big spin or like okay. go around with that. That's <laughs> a good one. And what about frontside flips? Do you do you like the frontside flips? I, I I see a couple frontside flips from you that are pretty nice. You have the technique. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? I have a super hard time to do them on gaps because. I'm actually I want to work on it because I feel like if I if I try hard enough, I <laughs> will be able to do it. Obviously, because I have really good front side flips on flat, but like on gap, it scares me. I don't know why. Yes. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's definitely that's something that I want to start working on because because yeah. um, you know you know like we all have tricks that are easier for us and seems super hard for other people and then some people like some of my friends can do like half cab heels down gaps super easily and I'm like I don't even want to try <laughs> you know yes. or like just different tricks and for me nolly big spin is like super natural and then they're like how do you do that so I think it's important for people to like be aware of that and start with the things that are more natural for you and then you can work on harder stuff because sometimes it's like can be um, discouraging to like try a trick that you're supposed to be able to do but like for me heel flips like I don't have good heel flips and I kind of made peace with the fact that my heel flips don't look good <laughs> you know <laughs> but there's so many other tricks that I can do but like at some point you have to pick and choose because there's so many options in skateboarding Yes, that's true. And we don't have to lie to ourselves when it comes to skating because sometimes we 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 think that we can overpass our limits and we say like, okay, I can go for that hard flip down that set of stairs. But do I have a good and solid hard flip in, in flat ground? So so yeah. Exactly. And and even like for me, I know for example, to take your example, like 
hard flips, it's like I don't understand how to float it in the air, like on a gap or something. But I'll go with like, like tree flip is way more natural or like, but hard flip or varial heel is way more natural for me than hard flip. So I'll try with these, these ones. And it doesn't matter if even if my in my whole life, I never do a hard flip on a gap, like I still have so many other options. <laughs> but you have to do it in, in flat ground, a hard flip, of course. Right. No, no. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're, they don't, they look like varial flips on the other side. <laughs> you know, like they're not like good drop. It's kind of fun flip. because, uh, you know, the first time I, I did a hard flip, the way I learned it was doing a frontside flip and then yeah. like a body Me varial. Too. And yeah, Same. that's the way. And after a couple <laughs> weeks, I, I get I get the technique, but, but and, yeah. Do the same thing. I don't know if you can already do fakie hard flips, but that's how I learned fakie hard flips. I was like fakie front side, well, fakie back side flip, or I don't even know. And then front side flip, yeah. Yeah, fakie front side flip, and then you're thinking just without turning, and <laughs> it just—I swear, it took me like two tries, I think, and it just went <laughs> fakie hard flips. <laughs> and it works, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you were mentioning that you had an injury in your ankle. What what just happened to you? And, and when was that? It was, um, so April, not this year, but last year. Okay. I um, tore two ligaments in my front oh. ankle. So it is the se second time it happened. So it's like, it takes so long to heal because when it's actually torn, it takes like, it's not just when, like when you roll your ankle and you're fine a couple weeks after. It's like, it took, the first time it took 10 months before I could oh. skate again. Yeah. And, but this time I actually had like, I have a, a physio sponsor. So they like helped me. I went to physio every week and like, it took five months before I could do everything again. Like I went to competition after five week, uh, five months, like I was completely back, but it still like took so long. Um, okay. so I missed a big part of the summer, which is a big deal in Montreal because it's like, we only have like six months of six seven months of skating outside and then i missed like most of it so um so that was a bummer and then i missed a lot of competitions i didn't miss them but i i, I still went but like i couldn't really <laughs> actually the first competition was london it was street league and i i did it and i um I couldn't really skate, but I, I scored 0 0.9. <laughs> okay. And then I was like, yeah, in your, 0 in your 0 0.9 club. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I was, and then I was like, 0 0.9 club. Like, you know, like the nine club. <laughs> 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 we were kind of, we were joking about it, but I couldn't, I couldn't really skate. Like I was just like cruising around. <laughs> I went for like the points and it was funny. <laughs> you, you had fun. And what, and yeah. what about that? Um, because when, for example, in my case, when I had a bad uh, performance in competitions, I feel frustrated because I see that the other, the other skaters are skating so well and, and yeah. maybe my practice wa was well, but when, when the run comes, I, I messed up. So I, I, I feel frustra frustrated. Um, that doesn't happen to you? Oh yeah, it does. The, frustrate, um, the frustration? <laughs> It does, but um, the thing is, I think you have to be prepared. That's one thing I learned with like, because competition, it's only been two years that I've been doing competition. When you think about like other sports, like the kids, they start super young and they do like, let's say like in diving or something, like you do so many competitions so you get used to it and you're, you have like mental coaching and physical coaching. So for us, for skateboarders, it's really new. So just having like, um, a strategy to build up your runs, for, let's say for a contest, like, or pick which best tricks you're going to do depending on how you feel and like how, how much you practice. Because another thing for Street League, we don't get a lot of practice. We get like maybe two or three times one hour with like 50 other people on the course. So it's not that, it's not a lot of practice too. So you have to come prepared <laughs> before yes, you I get know. there. And, um, and get, and also mentally that's what i was gonna say too because like before i used to say, like rely a lot on like the adrenaline I'll, i was like oh i didn't practice a lot my best tricks but like when i have the pressure i'll do it you know and then i missed it sometimes and i was like oh i didn't practice like <laughs> you know yes. so 
so now it's like I'm getting better with my strategy of like just like um, getting ready for a competition and but it still happens it happened the last um, qualifier I was landing everything in my runs like I had such a good run I was doing everything like perfect and then both of my runs I just missed the first trick no. and then like you know and then you're like oh yeah like you, <laughs> you and, but i had the, it all the time you lose the inspiration exactly and you lose the points too <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> so so it's like it's um it's hard to recover from like missing your first trick in a run but um but then i was talking about it with my mental coach because we and we because that's the last competition so now i'm like working on like because before i used to think also like during a run you don't think You know, you just have to do what what you're supposed to do. But at the same time, like some tricks, you have to think like maybe just one word of like, let's say for my feeble, I'm like, sometimes like I need to think myself like pop higher because if you miss a feeble, it goes into a board slide, you know? So I'm like, just focus on the back truck. And then as soon as you're locked in, you're good, you know? But like those little words before each trick or most tricks, like the first trick I was missing all the time, it was like a little hubba. And I was starting my run with nose grinds. I had yes. really good nose grinds, but like I didn't put enough weight in front. So it would like nose grind to 50. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. So, so like, let's say like now with this new strategy, every time I'm trying the nose grind, I'm like, put all your weight in front. You can't really fall forward. You can only like miss because <laughs> you don't put enough weight in the front. Okay. So it's like, it's all those little words, I think that are okay. important. And in a run, you prefer to to start easy and then go go uh, beginning to go hard with the tricks um or or, the, or or you can start with a hard trick it depends i think i think it's important to start with something you know you can do every try but it's um the the um, the trap i think is to do too easy stuff that the judges like they stop watching after 15 seconds you know if you do If you do something cool within the first 15 seconds, at least they're like, oh, yes. you know, like that one competition I was doing, like nose grind on the little hubba and then burial heel on the hip. And then the thing in the middle was kind of like easier. And then I was finishing with a bigger trick. But like if you start with nose grind and then burial, like a good burial heel, like they're like, oh, they're going to watch you run. Yeah, but if, that's yeah, true. if you do like it's true, like if but if you do just like sports slide and 50 because they're like the easier tricks and even if you don't fall like you're not gonna stand out so i think that's yeah. another important thing for me is like a lot of tricks there's a lot of tricks that i don't do or don't practice just because i know it's too it's too uh, like if everybody else is doing that like that's why i'm go i'm doing a lot of like board side two shoves or like or like my feebles i always go 180 because for me it's like even easier now that I've done so much, but like everybody does feeble. So just doing feeble 180 or feeble shove, it's like just this little twist that makes yes. you stand out. We definitely have to make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. We need to innovate because everybody can do that, as you as you're yeah. saying. And that's why pro skaters stand out too. Like if you think of like Jamie Foy, like you think of like the really good front crook pinch. <laughs> And then you know, to like throw some fuel, it's like... Uh, yeah, and everything else. But like you, like people who have something that makes them stand out, I think it's really important. Yes, that's true. I agree with you. So uh, you have the opportunity to travel around the world because of the, of the contest. What do you think about the skate communities? Making a comparison between all the countries, uh, can you say that are different or is the, is the same vibe? What, what can There's you say? A, I think it's the same vibe. That's a, like, it's pretty similar. And that's something that's really nice. I think about the skate community is like, well, it, there's differences obviously, but like you can travel anywhere. And if you see skaters or like go to a skate park, like there's like a good chance that you're going to get along with other skaters from anywhere. But then I think there's like some places that are more intimidating than others or like like if you go to california like it's not going to be as like as of a tight scene as like if you go come to like some like like barcelona or you yes. know like you go to a city and then you go to a famous like you go to magba and it's like 
always the same people and the the, um, the scene is really tight um so in general i think the skate community is like pretty um uh, open and like um and similar around the world and i think that's what makes it so special <laughs> okay i know what you mean that makes sense and what do you think about the, the skate community and the industry in your country in canada what can you say Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, well, Canada is really spread out, like it's really big, so um, it's going to be different in, in each main city, but um, I'm from Montreal and I still live in Montreal and I think the, the scene in Montreal is especially um, open and inclusive and I think we have a lot of um, really good initiatives from people within the community to like make it more inclusive too. Um, for example, we have um, um, Daisy's Angels, which is like okay. just a skate crew, but um, they started doing like safe, safe space sessions for people who are like too shy to go to a skate park by themselves. Like, you know, when you start skating, it's like super intimidating. You don't yes. know where to put yourself and stuff. So these sessions are really good. Like they're, they're just going to call a session at a skate park and then everybody can go. And it's just like, you feel more welcome because you know you're not alone feeling like that. <laughs> yes. So it's really cool. And even going to like the way bigger um, initiatives, like even like Dime, um, they're from Montreal and they started doing a bunch of things too, to be just to make the, make everybody feel welcome within skateboarding. Like they're, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like the, the, um, skateboard scene not just in Montreal in Montreal I, I, I see it from like a, a close perspective but I think it's like that everywhere like everyone every skate scene is becoming more inclusive and more open to like all types of skateboarders and I think that's that's really good for the future yes we are we are seeing a good progress in that sense and talking about that what What do you think about the visibility that the women have in the skate community? What can you say about it? Um, I think it's better and better. It's because um, there's there's a, a long gap like between men and women in skateboarding, and that's part of the fact that it it took so long before women felt included in skateboarding. Like um, a lot of my friends, like I never really had that problem. I think. I had really good friends and I started young, so it helped. But like so many of my friends who started skating quit because they didn't have um, like close friends to skate with and or they didn't feel welcome in skate parks and or they didn't feel represented in media too. Like that's that's a big um, a big thing that happened with social media. Now we have access to so much um, inspiration as women or as even like people of color in skateboarding or like so many different yes. <laughs> people that didn't feel re uh, represented before. And um, like, for example, I'll give you an example. When I started skating, I saw, I think it's 2002, I saw um, a video of Vanessa Torres and Amy Caron. So I had that video and I was watching it all the time. Before I saw Vanessa skate again, because we didn't have social media, we didn't have YouTube. It took, I think, two or three years before I could see another video of Vanessa Torres, you know? So that makes a huge difference when you think of like in the inspiration you can get and like the access to uh, like other women or other people that inspire you. So I yes. think just to come back to the question, <laughs> that was a big <laughs> loop, <laughs> but <laughs> um, to come back to the question, I think now we like women ha have access to so much inspiration and Seeing little girls like um, Haisa, Leal from Brazil, or Sky Brown, like it inspires so many other women or girls. And then the more women you have, the more chances you have of having like greater performances. And that's how you build, um, like, that's how we're gonna shorten the gap between men and women. It's like having more girls do it in the first place, and then it's gonna happen. Yes, are happening good things for the women right now in the skateboarding community. We can sit um, in a street league, the women section is, is nice. 
and also in the video games. Uh, when I start skating, the only character that I can choose maybe was well, Elise Steamer. But yeah. now it's like, hey, I have a bunch of very nice skate yeah. women. That's nice. Exactly. Exactly. And that we, sometimes we don't realize how important visibility is. And it's so important. And it's, yeah, I think now with social media, that, I think that's something we're realizing is like how much that impacts reality. Like even like, for example, Thrasher, now they started to include women or just like different types of skaters in Thrasher. Because before, like if you didn't think about it, you didn't realize, but to go through like 10 Thrashers, like you don't see a lot of different see? people. Like everyone's pretty much the same. And, um, and that makes a huge difference. Like if you're a woman and you watch this, you're like, where do I fit in that? Like, I'm never going to be that guy who jumps down 20 stairs or does like, a huge crooked grind like and if you're just starting skateboarding this seems like like unattainable yes. you know so i think if there's um it, it has to start somewhere and i think starting by showcasing the the women or people who are already there and then it's gonna start this like virtuous circle yes i know what you mean um have you had any bad experience with people or men that say, hey, I can stand that a girl skate or, or something like that? Have yeah, it's not that um, for me, like, per, like I've heard horror stories, but for me, I've never had like someone actually like come in like a very aggressive way. But most of the time it's going to be like uh, more passive aggressive, like, like, oh, if that girl can do it, like, like laughing at like let's say like a guy who laughs at his friend like oh even she can do it like you can't and i'm like well i've been skating for way longer than him like it's not just about like i'm a woman so and you're a man so you should be able to do it it's like also like i put in way more work and it makes sense that i'm able to like trace it that stair set or whatever and then he's like struggling to ollie it because he's been skating for like two like a year <laughs> you know yes. so it's that's the thing i think some people like they'll like lower standards for for women so um and they're they're gonna like not think about how the all the work that we're, we've been doing and um, so for me it's been like more passive aggressive but i've had friends who like guys would like bully and throw their boards outside of the skate park and stuff okay. like okay yeah <laughs> and um but i think now it changed that's like when i started skating more um for, for my friend, like, throwing the board and stuff. I don't think people would do that anymore. Yes. I would be surprised of stories like that. But now it's mostly on the internet. Like, like trolls and... Because you have to think, like, people who will troll women um, skaters who, like, post clips and stuff. Like, it, it happens to me on Instagram, too. Like, sometimes I'll post a clip and then there's, like, trolls and stuff. But, like, you know, these people are real people and... They're real skaters, like they're skaters in real life. And that makes me sad, you know, like to think yeah. that someone like that is actually a skater somewhere in the world and just hates the fact that women are getting attention in skateboarding. Like it doesn't change anything for you. It just like the worst it, that it's going to do is like inspire a young girl to start skating. And maybe she's going to be the next like Elisa Steamer, <laughs> yes. you know, so it's like it makes me sad sometimes to think that some people have like so much hate. Yeah, it's, that that's true. But it, but as you were saying, it's it's changing, and and that yeah. we are going to be glad in the future because that is going to be over. Uh, but Hopefully. what would be your advice for the women that yeah are feeling a lot of pressure because of the hating? And maybe are saying like, ah, I, I, I want to quit the skateboarding because this is not for yeah. women, maybe. What would be your advice? Because you have the experience. Yeah. Um, well, I would say two things. Yeah, I would say two things. Um, the first one is like, get inspiration from people who like speak to you, you know, like it doesn't matter. Like if you don't feel inspiring looking, looking at Nigel, because that's not the type of skating that you want to do, like, that's okay. Just some people are going to get inspired by people skating like 
terms or being super technical or like doing no complies like it doesn't even matter like just do whatever you want with your skateboard like it's yours it's your life you can do whatever you want and, and get the inspiration that you want and then the second thing i would say like try to surround yourself with people who uplift you and like you have fun skating with and that's like i'll come back to daisy's angels the group that we have in montreal like that's kind of the goal it's just to create this space for people to meet and then make friends with other people who have the same skate interests or like want to skate the same spots and then that's how you hook people to skateboarding i think is like making them feel part of the community and that's what i would i would tell people to like surround yourself with just like positive people and don't like the haters are always going to exist and it's hard like i sometimes i fall in that trap too of like feeling sad for a whole day because like i had a bad comment on instagram you know <laughs> i know <laughs> but how like, it feels. yeah exactly but like i think you just have to like i try to remind myself to that it's not like it doesn't represent me or And, and it doesn't matter in the end like the internet is just this weird place where yes. it's not real life <laughs> yes that's true S uh, haters gonna hate and that's a fact yeah skaters gonna skate uh, skaters gonna skate i love <laughs> it <laughs> yeah that's true okay any the, the conversation is about to end um a couple questions more and that's it uh one one question is an advice what would be your advice for the front for the front side flips In, in the way you do it you do that <laughs> yeah because um well first of all you have to be able to do front 180s and kick flips i think that's like obvious but still like having good front 180s front kick um, and then kick flips and then for front side flip, the, the trick is actually to so when you do your your kick flip you're gonna you flip straight right you're just like doing kick flip. front side flip you have to turn your shoulders and waist before you pop like before you go down for your ollie so that's the first trick and then the second trick when you kick it you have to kick at like a 90 degree angle and towards the ground and oh. i know it sounds weird but like a lot of people are gonna flip super high and then they lose their board like their board just goes far so the trick to keep it really close to you and under you is to kick towards the ground and if you honestly like I said that to a couple people and the first time they try without thinking, they just do it, they land on it and it's, they're like, ah, <laughs> and then you start overthinking it and it doesn't work again. But like, try to think of kicking towards the ground, like when you ollie and then you kick towards the ground and it works. Okay. Taking note of that. I, I, I need to work on my frenzy flips because yeah. Yeah. I'm, try it. And then obviously like. When you kick it, then with your front foot, you try to aim for like your nose, and then. Oh, okay. But like okay. the 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 really like the key of the front side flip, I think, is like flip towards um, 90 degrees and towards the ground, and then it kind of flips under you. Okay, it comes natural after that. Okay, <laughs> thank you for those advices. <laughs> and <laughs> one last advice. Also, I know that you you know the answer. What would be your advice to deal with the pressure when it comes to competitions, you know? Yeah, um, I would say um, stay with like, it's okay. So before like all the time you're practicing, like you always have to push yourself and try new things and like work outside of your comfort zone. But when you're in a competition, it's a different mindset. You don't want to go outside of your comfort zone. You want to stay within the things that you know you can do all the time and that's how you're going to build your confidence too because if you try like a lot of people sometimes they're like they try to prove themselves in competition but like that's not how you're going to be successful because you have to already be able to do those things you know like if you watch Nigel for example you think he's doing like the craziest thing and he never tried it but he like he's just that good in practice too you know that's yeah. the thing like you have to be good in practice before and then you just perform like I, i think of it as like practice mode and then performance mode and like performance mode is basically going in your flow and doing the things that you practice every time every time so that's that would be like my one advice is like like focus on the things that you can do, yeah, that you can already do and that you're confident that you can do every try. 
Thank you. I love it. I love that advice. Thank you for, for those words <laughs> and taking note of them. Okay, yeah. Annie, we just finished with this conversation. Thank you for the words that you share and the conversation that we My just pleasure. had. And I wish you good luck to be to see you in the Olympics the next year. Yeah. So let's go for the tricks and let's go for that consistency. Yeah, thank right? you so much. Okay, and thank you for accepting this invitation of being here in the shit podcast. I hope yeah, maybe in pleasure. the future we can skate. Maybe there, yeah. maybe here, maybe... Someday. It's going to happen. It can happen. <laughs> good. Okay. Thank you, Annie. Have a nice session. Have a nice skate session and have a nice skate day. Thank you. Bye. You too. Bye. Perfect. Good vibes for you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And that was it for today's shit podcast, guys. I really hope that you feel inspired with the conversation that we just had. Annie Guglia has an amazing mindset for skateboarding. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And yeah, as I was saying, let's stop watching this and let's go skate, guys. And always with good vibes.